Hi, everybody. Welcome. And it's exciting to be here as part of uh, some education we're going to have today around recycling and National Recycling Week. But I thought I might kick off by apologies, we'll just get rid of this out of the. There we go. Sorry. Thank you. Um, by acknowledging traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on today, both here and online as well. And here it's the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And if you think about it, probably one of the most richest cultures, but also the greatest knowledge in the management of land. And on the topic today, how we think about circularity and the recycling and reuse of those things that help us live our lives. Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people did that better than anyone for 60,000 or more years. And so a huge amount we can learn from them as we go through today's topic as well. So I acknowledge elders past and present and acknowledge any Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people that are here today as well. So I thought I might just kick off with a little bit on DEXUS. And my name, I'm Romana James, and I'm the head of our sustainability team at DEXUS. So I thought I could just really quickly share a little bit about our sustainability focus. And then we'll translate that into recycling as well. So we've been doing a strategic review over the last number of months, working with people from across our organization, including our management and our board. And we've been testing what's the most material and important things that we should be thinking about and focused on. And what's interesting in that process was how much, how important sustainability was becoming for our customers. So not just the uh, providers of capital that might own shares in our company or that might contribute funds towards the funds that we run, but actually the people that occupy our buildings, the tenants and the occupants that are using those spaces that we own and manage at times or manage on behalf of others as well. And so out of that, we intentionally selected a focus area, which is slightly different to what you might hear in traditional sustainability strategies. And that one is around customer prosperity. So we believe that if we can play a role in supporting our customers, the tenants and occupants of our assets, in them achieving their own sustainability goals and in making our assets support and enable the well-being of their people and them to effectively deliver and drive activity and work, they're going to be more productive. They're also going to be more valuable for us in terms of being customers of ours as well. So today's a really great example of where we can bring customers together, tenants in a building, to learn more about something that helps them build and understanding, but potentially deliver against some of those goals that they've been setting themselves in sustainability as well. So very much excited by today being aligned to customer prosperity and you all being here in the room. The other thing maybe to call out is this building itself. So we're talking about you know waste and recycling and circularity. This building, the core of this building was retained rather than knocked down. And I think many of you probably know that, but for those that don't, that saved a significant amount of waste and helped us then save climate or energy emissions and climate change impacts as well. And so that's an example of, um, I guess, thinking about circularity and recycling and reuse at a massive building scale. But then we can take that down to what does that mean for individual organizations and then for individuals in their houses as well. And I think that's why it's really exciting that we've got Haley here today, who's gonna to run this session with us where we can all learn and I'll be learning a lot myself as well. So a little bit about Haley. Um, she's got a lovely um, dog called Rosie, which I saw on the picture before, which was, who was very, very cute. But she's also the Recycling Campaigns Manager, and she's responsible for the coordination of the National Recycling Week. It's a pretty big one. And Planet Ark's role in public education and awareness of the Australian Recycling Label. Um, for more than 10 years, she's worked in not-for-profits, delivering, developing, and managing sustainability education programs for primary and high schools. So I think she's going to be able to deal with any questions you might throw at her with that background and experience. Um, so without more to ado, I'm going to invite Hayley up. Um, a big thank you, Hayley, and looking forward to hearing more. Come on up. Hello. Um, hi, I'm Hayley. It doesn't matter how old people are. You always fill up from the back. It doesn't matter if you're in kindy or a 60 year old um yeah so i'm Haley. i i am i've been introduced i don't need to go on about that yeah today we're, we're mainly going to focus on recycling and i'll touch a little bit on other sustainable waste practices as well all righty 
So I am from Planet Ark. Uh, Planet Ark's been around for a while, since 92. And we're about um, helping communities, governments, businesses, everyone doing little actions every single day towards sustainability. And we are one of, if not the most trusted environmental organisation in Australia. We have a lot of programs. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, I've also only been with Planet Art for three months. So don't, if you have any hairy questions, Sarah in the room, you, you can ask Sarah about our different programs. But yeah, I, so I manage the recycling, not that one, National Recycling Week and the ARL programs. All right, before we get into it, we do have National Recycling Week. It was established in 96. And I just want to point out the waste hierarchy. Recycling is not the ultimate answer. It's a really important part of living sustainably and working towards a circular economy. But you can see on the waste hierarchy, it, it's halfway down. Okay, so the best thing we can do um, for the environment in terms of waste for our planet is actually to reduce the amount that we consume and reuse what we do have already. Then we go to recycling. Uh, reasons for that, it does take, if you think about recycling, you're putting, you know, commingled or separated containers in a recycling bin. It needs to be transported somewhere. It needs to be sorted out. It needs to be broken down. Um, it probably needs to be shipped overseas to be sometimes turned into new things and then maybe shipped back all, all over the world. So it still has a carbon footprint. We are saving a lot of resources, but we can definitely do a lot better by reusing what we already have and reducing the amount of waste we consume in the first place. Uh, waste to energy is a bit controversial. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, and landfill is our last option. Now, obviously, landfill is better than littering. We do need somewhere to contain our waste. But we really need to think about our waste, not just when you're at the bin, but when you're in the shops. Think about where that will end up. And if the answer is landfill, think about if you really need it. Maybe you do. That's fine. It's okay. And I just wanted to point out, I'm not going to go into the circular economy, but I wanted to point out that recycling is not like the circular economy. It's just a part of the circular economy. So if we're looking to moving towards a circular economy, we're looking at reimagining and re redesigning the products that we use, um, sustainable production, sustainable consumption, looking at re reusing and repairing, uh, as well as recycling and waste management. But I just really wanted to point that out because I know the recycling symbol is that Mobius loop going round and round and round. All right, so I hope you're familiar with the waste streams in your building um, because I know Dexas has a multi-stream system here. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Don't freak out. But if you're not familiar, your homework uh, after this session is to go and have a look at the different, I'll show you the bins in the next slides, the different waste streams that Dexas supplies. Um, Organics is a huge one. I'll talk a little bit about that in a further slide. Um, but just be really mindful. I know a lot of people tend to throw their organics in the general waste bin. So just think about that if you have an organics option. Um, and yeah, Dexas keeps on top of their waste with the waste audit reviews and feedbacks um, to review effect effectiveness and identify opportunities to improve. And is there anything you wanted to add about your waste stream? It's all up here. So have a look. I hope you're familiar, really familiar with the yellow, blue, green bins, especially, and the landfill. I think not every building will have the e-waste soft plastic coffee cup collections. That's opt-in, but you should all be familiar with your four bin system at least. Now we're going to do a little bit of a quiz because I hate lectures. Uh, so on the next slide, you'll be asked to log in to uh, Mentimeter on your phone. So if you want to grab your phones, you have permission. You can tell I used to teach in schools, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you should be able to use the QR code or go to menti.com and enter the code 
17807959. And I want you to answer the question, which is the fastest growing waste stream in Australia? And I'll give you a little minute. Uh, while you're doing this, I'll say I will have time for questions at the end. If you have questions as we're going around, pop them in the chat and then they'll be yelled to me at the end. Um, but I will also have a slide at the end where you can pop your questions in. All right, so we've got food waste, do you reckon? E-waste, plastic? Has everyone in the room voted yet? Hands up if you voted. All right, not quite half. Hands on your heads if you voted. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hands, shoulders, knees and toes. All right, I'll give you 10 more seconds. You've got to give students timings so you know. <laughs> I do feel a bit weird being behind the podium. I'm used to sort of throwing my arms around. All right, so it's pretty close, but it looks like everyone thinks food waste is the fastest growing waste stream in Australia. Then, e ooh, e-waste is coming up. Plastic, 10 seconds is up, guys. It's e-waste. Yeah. So I, I think people have food waste in their minds because we're talking a lot about food waste, but that waste hasn't, hasn't really, it's not growing. Um, it's e-waste. So uh, 21.7 kilograms is the amount of e-waste each Australian disposes of per year. Uh, this is one of the highest in the world. If you think about how much your phone weighs and how much your computer weighs, it's not 20 kilos. It's a, it's a lot of e-waste. Um, let's see if you can do better here. The number in the triangle, tri the triangle tells you that this can be recycled. True or false? So we'll get our Menti apps. So on your phone or you can do it on the computer, you can, you just go to the next slide. All right, 20 seconds. False, false, or oh, tie. It's like watching a race. What? Oh. What? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, all right. What? Oh. Are you doing this on purpose now? <laughs> Okay, 23, I think it's false, 22, I think it's true, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, it's false. So that is only referring to the type of plastic it is. So you may have seen it even on... Um, Usually when computers and things come in that plastic bag that has a triangle and a number on it, that's just telling you, uh, or not you, but it's telling who needs to know the kind of plastic it is. So don't rely on that little simple symbol. We do have the Australasian recycling label. I hope, uh, well, another piece of homework for you. If you haven't noticed this on your boxes before, go and have a look. I know that you will see red cycle in some of them and that's just because the packaging has the labels have been updated but that packaging was already produced so rather than throw away those sort of old labels they'll come out in the next stream with the different recycling on them but these sort of box um wrap and lid are pretty common i uh, just quickly the colored in the box that means you can just throw it into your bin into your yellow recycling bin the uncolored one means that there are conditions around it. So it could be check locally, check if there's a drop-off point. Uh, it could be you need to, for example, scrunch aluminium foil up into a ball about the size of a golf ball before you can pop it into your yellow recycling bin. Um, really quickly, that's because if you leave, it has to be clean, if you leave aluminium foil sort of as a sheet of paper, when it gets to the MRF, the MRF, sorting facility it's going to blow away with other bits of paper as it's sorted it's not going to be heavy enough to go through the aluminium recycling process there uh, that's what we call conditionally recyclable some things do have to go in a landfill bin that's fine don't what we call wish cycle 
if you think, yeah, I this is made of plastic, if I pop it in the yellow bin, they're going to sort it and it'll be recycled, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, it's a very set infrastructure. Do you look around for um, alternative recycling, um, Recycle Smart? I'll talk about it a bit later. I did notice um, Central Station. Have you guys noticed, noticed that Banish store? Another bit of homework for you. Um, walking from Central Station, when you go through that tunnel, um, there's a Banish store and you can return a lot of things there and they'll send them away. All right, another question. Let's see if you get this right. Reduce and reuse is better for the environment, but it doesn't incentivize the economy. True or false? Phones out. Reduce and reuse is better for the environment, but it doesn't incentivize <laughs> the economy. No one picked up on that typo. <laughs> false. True. 10 more seconds, 15 more seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Most of us think it's false. Yeah. Maybe I should make this. How about that? There we go. It is false. Um, so $15 billion is how much uh, Australia's sharing economy is worth per year. Next one. Food or organic waste degrades in landfill statement. Is this good or bad? Is food and organics wasting uh, degraded in landfill good or bad that was a really strong response straight off the bat i i'm gonna say you guys have been listening to the national recycling week <laughs> communique five more seconds five four three two one really it's really really bad um green uh, sorry organic waste uh, decomposing in a landfill is decomposing or rotting without oxygen in an anaerobic environment so it produces methane as it rots under there and methane is uh, 20 times over 20 times worse uh, than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas for the first 20 years of its life uh yeah and the cost of food waste, we found out uh, in our research recently, is most Australians estimate they're throwing away about $20 of food every week. And it's actually double that. We're throwing away about $41 of food every week. So Australians really underestimate their food waste. Uh, uh, also, keep an eye out. I pointed out the organics bin that Dexas has. Keep an eye out if you live in the high right, if you live in the city looking for FOGO. Hands up if you know what I mean by FOGO. I know one person, oh, two people, three people. Okay. So FOGO, F-O-G-O, -O, food organics, garden organics. So it's a new waste stream, not in every single council area, but have a look because some are opt-in in in areas. And it's a bit like the old green bin, except you can put different food scraps in there as well. And they take that away to be composted instead of buried underneath the ground. It's not an option for everyone yet. Um, obviously, the, the best thing to do is not waste a lot of food, but obviously we always have scraps. If you've got room for a compost or a worm farm, that's amazing. You'll you'll also have this great um, fertilizer for any plants garden you have around. There are also compost sharing apps where you can drop off and pick up compost. So check those out as well. All right. So that was the last of the questions. I kind of wish I made that a quiz so I could see who won, but that's fine. We're going to look at our recycling, our commingled recycling, which is where it's all mixed up, and the common mistakes that we see. We see a lot of soft plastics in commingled recycling, in curbside yellow bin recycling. Uh, it's, I think, the number one contamination problem reported by councils. So people popping those soft plastics in 
Uh, maybe they've seen that recycling, the, I shouldn't call it a recycling symbol. You know what I mean? That question I had, the Mobius loop with the number inside. Um, and they think, okay, that can be recycled. Your curbside and most commingled recycling is set up for containers and paper and cardboard. It's not set up for everything, okay? So general rule, but please check um, your council area, is paper and cardboard, sometimes cartons, glass jars and bottles, um, aluminium and steel cans, and what's the last one? Hard plastics. But check for that ARL to see if it goes in your yellow recycling bin. Bagging recyclables, like collecting your recycling like you would regular garbage and popping that in. Even if for some reason you have to collect your recyclables in a bag, make sure you put it in that recycling bin loose. Okay, it has to be loose. It needs to be sorted out. If a bag of recycling gets to the, um, sorry, a MRF is a material recovery facility. So that's where your commingled recycling is sorted out and bailed up. If it gets there in a bag, they're very likely just going to throw that into the landfill pile. So you've just sort of wasted your time and resources there. We still see food on organics in commingled recycling. I don't understand this. We, should I tell them the story we had from Townsville? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we do a council ring around at Planet Ark every year and we ask them recycling. Sorry, we ask councils their recycling problems. And one of our team, Tessa, came up to us and she said, uh, so Townsville have reported that um, pig's heads are a really common contaminant in their recycling system. Yeah, that's the that's the appropriate reaction. <laughs> Keep them out, please. All right, non-recyclable plastic. So people looking at like toy cars, sunnies, things like that. I'm um, thinking, oh, yeah, it's a hard plastic. I can throw that in. Again, most commingled recycling, definitely council services, are made for more containers, so made for things, your food or your um, laundry products come in. Polystyrene, I don't see a lot. We don't see as much of blah, blah, blah. We don't see as much of that anymore, but we, but we do still see it. I think less in the takeaway containers and more in like packaging around electronics. It may again have that little triangle on it. It doesn't belong in your recycling. This is something we really do need to try and avoid. In Australia, we don't have any options for recycling that. Uh, it goes to landfill. And yeah, nappies and clothing. Clothing, I can kind of see the logic of someone's like, oh, maybe someone else will use this. I'll put it in my yellow bin. Don't do that. Um, if you have good clothing that you just don't wear, donate it. If it's no good, don't dump it on a charity. So don't take your crappy old dirty holy clothes to like Vinnie's or Salvo's because you're just wasting their time. They get a lot of crappy clothes. So good clothes, yes, donate them. Um, clothes you can't wear anymore. If you can't repurpose them, turn them into scraps. But I don't know if you're sewers, if you can do things like that, excellent. Um, I don't know, throw them on your kids as a smock or something, then they go in the red bin. All right. So we're going to go through a few levels. Um, try and keep the waste hierarchy in mind here. So thinking about how we can be good or be gooder. Uh, so looking at non-recyclable item swaps, coffee cups, uh, even if they're compostable coffee cups, uh, you know, there's still a lot of processing that has to happen. Re compostable coffee cups are usually not suitable for home, home compost either. Um, it's only industrial composting because it gets a lot hotter that will actually break those down. There's still a lot of energy behind that. Um, if you can swap your coffee cups out for a reusable one, Excellent. I've seen people, and I know people at our office, they'll pick up a mug from the kitchen and take it down to the coffee shop. People do that. I saw this lady at the station once. I thought she was a genius. She just popped like one of those reusable lids on her coffee mug. And I was like, you're my hero. But it's a big one. Um, there are definitely drop-off points for coffee cups. Uh, they do not go in your yellow recycling bin either. 
All right. Um, you can buy nifty little pouches of cutlery to uh, avoid those sort of plastic picnic things. Hopefully that cutlery will be um, mostly outlawed soon. Napkins, if you can have cloth napkins instead of those paper serviettes, that's excellent. Another thing about those paper serviettes, even if they're clean, they still don't, don't go in your recycling bin. So tissues, serviettes, they don't go in recycling. They also don't go down the toilet. They go in the bin. Hope everyone does this uh, using your own bags instead of grabbing bags. I know that bag's a little bit outdated looking, uh, but I know it's a huge issue of people getting to the supermarket and buying yet another reusable bag and another reusable bag. Um, like handy tips, try and keep a bunch of them in the boot of your car, um, at least one or two little scrunched up ones in your bag or put them by the door so you don't forget them. Cling wrap, uh, swapping that for beeswax wraps. They're really fun to make. They're really easy as well. Um, cotton, beeswax, and I think oh, all that oil, some sort of oil. I don't really know how to pronounce that. That's why I make that funny thing. Sorry. Um, and receipts, just say no. You don't need a receipt. Or you can get an electronic one. I think that says electronic behind my amazing face here. Yay. All right, so that's being good. We're swapping these things out. For the office, um, Planet Arc, we do offer uh, printer cartridge recycling, cartridges for Planet Arc, and they this is where they take that leftover ink and create artist pens as well. They do create, um, not artist pens, ink for artists to use. Uh, Mobile Master is a free service um, that I personally get a bit annoyed with coffee pods because I don't think they're that good. I don't know why people get them. Like, just get in this. Anyway, that's my problem. Um, but there are, uh, we have now a pod cycle as well with Planet Arc and Espresso will also do their own free um, recycling. Officeworks is a really amazing place to drop a lot off. Um, so they're free solutions. Cost a little bit. Um, batteries for Planet Arc, uh, we do uh, service for that as well. So having those recycled within uh, City of Sydney, you know, Inner West and Council areas, uh, Recycle Smart do have a service. So Recycle Smart, you get these pink bags, you fill them up with, you've got to check out their website because there are so many different things that can go in those bags and they'll pick them up for you. And they will cost a bit unless you live in an LGA they service for free. And the DEX is extras that we looked into in, that you can have in your building. Uh, E-waste, um, coffee cups, and I don't know about soft plastics. I think we might need to scrap that one for now. All right. We talked about the ARL a little bit. Um, check it before you chuck it. That's our logo. And sometimes we wake up in the night screaming, check it before you chuck it, because we hear it so often. Um, I went through this before, but recyclable, so that filled in. Mobius loop, um, you can just put it into your yellow or co-mingled recycling bin as it is. The not filled out one is conditionally recyclable. You have to follow those instructions for it to become recyclable in your curbside bin or at a drop-off point and not recyclable at all. Pretty self-explanatory. It's a bin symbol. All right. Be even better. So looking towards a circular economy or swap economy, donate, borrow, share, swap, bring your own coffee cup, water bottle, cutlery containers, um, food waste, bring your leftovers in. Um, keep in mind that we waste almost double what we think we waste uh, with food waste, save your money. Um, buy secondhand when you can. Or if there, if you can keep a stash of like office coffee cups for people to grab and take to the cafe, um, plates, glassware and office furniture. There are so many great programs now uh, to swap office furniture around instead of buying new furniture. Um, at home, especially with Christmas coming up, um, think about the quality of your gifts versus the quantity. So not like stocking stuffers but thinking about experiences maybe lovely homemade gifts maybe food gifts things like that secondhand uh, is an amazing way 
um, to give gifts or to, to bring stuff into your home. There are a lot of great tool and toy libraries around. So your local councils, wherever you live, check out your local council website and they have tool and toy libraries available, usually free. Um, question what you need or want. Um, sh yeah, shop your wardrobe or pantry before you go out into the shops. And like I went, um, I said before, donate your clothes responsibly. So good clothes, good quality clothes, donate if they're holy, not in a biblical sense, if they've got holes in them, they do need to go in the bin. All right, just some city recycling options here. So take styles, H&M, Zara, Uniqlo, Rebel will take them, make up. There are drop-off points at Priceline and David Jones, uh, batteries, Woolies, Aldi's, Officeworks, mobile phones, the retailers, Woolies and Officeworks. Printer cartridges, we talked about those. Planet Arc does a service as well. Light globes, council libraries quite often take those as well as Ikea if you're heading that way. Libraries are usually closer. Uh, Office versus da, 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 da. and Sheridan will take your towels and sheets. Uh, we have a great site uh, run by Planet Arc. It's recyclingnearyou.com.au and it's extensive. It goes through every area. All right, our food waste solutions. Remember those green organic bins? I talked a bit about the FOGO, so I won't do that again. Composting is great if you have enough space, which I know not everyone does. Worm farms are way better for apartments if you have a balcony. <clears throat> community compost bins, uh, check out your local council for community gardens. They often have a compost drop-off or again, there are share waste apps where you can either host that you have a compost in your backyard and you can host more scraps or you can take them to someone who has the room to compost them. And Bakashi, I'm not a big fan, but uh, so I won't really go into it, but you can rot things down in a Bakashi bin. Be the best. Lead the way. So this is what we try and do and um, promote others to do. <clears throat> so if you're catering, think about social enterprises. No single use things is the best. Um, if you can cater with proper knives and forks and plates and things that will be washed and used again. If not, compostable packaging is all right. Office furniture, again, there are so many um, options now to, uh, what's the word, donate your furniture to other offices. Think about if you really need something, think about repairing, um, not just when something breaks, but when you purchase something, have a look, can it be repaired easily or is it just built to break and throw away. So I know it can be hard if, if you're trying to save, but spending good money for something that can be repaired over and over again will save you money in the long run. Um, landfill should never be your first option. Um, ban single use where you can. And again, look at the packaging before you buy it. All right, buy it back, so buy recycled. There aren't too many labels out there that will help you with this, but there are some. So supporting stewards, stewardship schemes um, that you know recycle products like cartridges for Planet Arc, rent and repair options, and buying paper is an easy one, buying recycled paper. Because um, closing the loop and creating a circular economy, it only works if we do the whole thing. Us just recycling doesn't mean that the economy, the circular economy is going to happen um, because we need to be buying back those recycled. We need to be creating market for recycled items as well. And in within your offices uh, or your teams, getting a green team together, just putting things in, uh, newsletters, education, signage, even if it's as simple as going through uh, your bin system again, just making sure it's at the front of people's minds and make it the norm within your office culture. And there are a few uh, certification groups you can do that with. So in summary, 
we have so many R's. You might have heard of the three R's, but it's it's a lot more than that. Rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, repair, and then recycle. Um, we do, plastic is a huge problem, but uh, organic waste is also a massive problem. So uh, we have a lot in the media about plastics, but don't forget your food waste. Make one change at a time. You don't have to do everything all at once. Just one little thing, one little step up that ladder makes a huge difference. Um, check it before you chuck it, buy it back. Your actions do have a huge impact, whether you're recycling or whether what you're choosing to buy, especially as well. Um, and be a leader. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or pop them in the Mentimeter. You can also always email Planet Arc. You can email us at recycling at planetarc.org as well. But I won't drag on if there are no questions. If there are questions in the room, you can just... Yeah. Um, what's your best tip for getting other people in the office to use the bins properly? Okay, so what's your best tip for getting people in the office to use their bins properly? Right. Uh, I think doing, uh, you could do weekly waste audits with the whole team, get them out, empty the bins, get a bit messy, put a tarp down and go through them. Um, doing presentations like this, if you go to Recycling Near You, we have like recycling trivia that you can do in your office and also presentations that explain what happens to the waste um, when it's contaminated, those sorts of things. I personally think a waste order is the most impactful. It not only shows the wrong things in the wrong bins that you need to correct, but it also shows how much waste you're producing. Is that it? Cool beans. All oh, good? Why, hmm. why is it it's just what they're made of? They Which, sorry? Coffee, coffee cups. Yeah, so that lining, yeah. if you rip apart a coffee cup, that lining makes it non recyclable. Okay. So even though I reset, it's just got to go through. Yes, it. yes. So, sorry, online, the question was why aren't coffee cups recyclable? Um, and it's that lining there. Furniture recycling, impossible to recycle some items. Uh, are they. Home items, if they're home items, it can be tricky. I do know that. Marketplace obviously is a good one if you are a patient person. Um, there, I reckon I will look into that properly for you though and find some actual schemes and I'll email, I'll get, we'll email Dexas with the answer to that one. Short videos, sure. I think that we will definitely email that answer um and dexas you're going to have to answer this question do dexas collect mm -hmm. coffee cups in the office or only in the displays in reception i think that depends on your building mm -hmm. yeah we've got a coffee and recycling thing in our kitchen yeah okay so one uh, i mentioned here there's a coffee recycling thing in the kitchen so that's an opt-in scheme so i'm guessing that's up to the office itself yeah yeah Oh, yeah. It's up to each office, I imagine. Yeah. That's a, more of a Dex's question than a me question, but it's up to each office to have the printer cartridge. Oh, excellent. So I believe that your, someone in your office can contact building management and also have a pickup. So there might be a centralized location you can store it and then once there's enough. Cool. Contact office management is the answer there. The printer cartridges. Awesome sauce. All right. Well, I'm going to finish this off because it's getting a bit awkward standing here. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Uh yeah, definitely if you I'll look into these questions and we will email um Dexas the answers uh, for everyone. And again, recycling at planetarc.org. No, just .org. Thank you. I always put .au. Recycling at planetarc.org. If you have questions for us, um, we can answer you directly. Cool beans. Thanks so much. Um, would you like to finish off or shall I? Just a big thank you. Let's say a big thank you for Haley. Thank you.
Thank you to everyone that's joined online as well. And um, have a good afternoon and good luck with your seven R's, are we saying seven now, I think? Seven, yeah. there could be 10. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Harley. Thank you, Planet Arc. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon.